This is a video I've been looking forward to for a little while now because it's the first time I've spent some quality time with the Theodio IEM. Linsol was kind enough to send me the Theodio Hype 2 and I can see why people might be hyped about it. I mean, this comes from the same stable that produced the Monarch Mark 2 and so on. So the Hype 2 coming in at $300, well, obviously people are hoping some of that trickles down at a more affordable price point. And the question is, does it deliver? We'll be exploring that today and also in our endeavor to explore that, we'll compare it with something that uh, is interesting. I won't want to give away too much just yet. Now, for the $300, what you get is big. Everything about the Theodio Hype 2 is big. You get this huge box inside which you get this positively huge case and the IEM itself is, you guessed it, massive. But before that, it does come with, interestingly, a polishing cloth and quite an interesting little finish. I've got mine in purple and if uh, you like that 60s kind of uh, tie-dye finish then yeah this might appeal to you. It also comes with a cable that in my opinion is not quite commensurate with the $300 price point. Not that I care too much but I know a lot of cable enthusiasts out there might. It reminds me of sort of the 7 Hz timeless cable but this is a nicer more refined version. Still I think there are nicer cables out there at this price point. Nonetheless, it does the job, so what do I care? Now, it also comes with silicon and foam tips, and that's a nice gesture because I like foam tips personally. They isolate better, but they don't seem to change the tonality or the tonal balance much, so there's no point talking about the differences between the tips. Just that the review today was done in a quiet room so that the foam tips versus silicone tips argument does not really hold any weight. As far as the sound, there is some emphasis on Theodore's website on their dual dynamic driver setup. Now, this is two dynamic drivers and two balanced armatures. I believe they are Sonion balanced armatures and they're two dynamic drivers which they say are configured in an isobaric configuration. Which, okay, the isobaric configuration isn't new per se, it's from the 1950s and what it means is you've got two subwoofers and they sort of act together to create a bigger sound in a smaller enclosure. The whole point, as far as I understand it, is to have big bass in small size. Which is ironic given the size of the Theodio Hype 2. Somehow, despite its isobaric configuration, they couldn't manage to make it any less chonker than it is. I mean, just look at the way it is in my ears. That is not insignificant and let's just compare it with okay i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag i'm going to compare it today with the kiwi ears quintet which is a whole 80 dollars cheaper and that's going to make more sense later in this video this is the quintet in one year and the type in the other i i mean i don't know if it's coming across on the camera but this thing juts out quite a bit nonetheless it's not uncomfortable because the shape of the iem is your typical sort of semi-custom iem shape nozzle diameter is about 6.1 millimeters and it's unfortunate that I say that that is quite normal, but that is the norm in Chi-Fi IEMs at least nowadays. It shouldn't be, but it is. Now, how does it sound? Okay, looking at the frequency response alone, I'm going to tell you one thing. It is clean sounding and I have no issues with it in the mids and the highs because to my subjective listening test, it seemed even, it seemed natural and it seemed like there were no large troughs or valleys that I could identify. So no major unevenness. Vocals seem to be relatively natural in timbre. Given that it's a balanced amateur, that's a nice thing. And I have no real issues with the mids and the highs. Genuinely tuned very well. And I'll get into some of the other stuff a little bit later because we should talk about the bass, given that they're talking about it so much. Now, when it comes to the bass, I have to say the impression I got of it was more. Again, big was the impression, which is great if you're a bass head but it doesn't go out of hand. So the bass is tuned in such a way that it does not bleed into the mids, it doesn't make everything all muddy, but I did notice that there is a persistent sub-bass quality throughout whatever you're listening to. So while it doesn't muddy the mids or change the characteristic of the sound, in the head, the effect of there always being that presence of sub-bass, it just, it's an all-pervasive sub-bass and it's hard to explain, but maybe sometimes, to my ears at least, they should have backed off on the sub bass a little bit. The mid bass, the thump, the punch of the mid bass is quite voluminous, but it's not necessarily better quality than other IEMs. It's just more. It's like dynamic driver personified, which at this point I realize it's going to make a lot more sense if I start making comparisons. So let's compare it with the Kiwi Ears Quintet, which is one of my favorite IEMs for price to performance category. Now, the Kiwi Ears Quintet is a whole $80 less and 
I think it's giving the hype to a run for its money in some ways. Bear in mind there are some big caveats, but let's just talk about that base for now. Actually, to talk about the base, I have to talk about a caveat. The Quintet comes with two types of silicone tips, no foam tips, clear and dark. I do not use the clear tips. It makes it sound very hot in the treble and it makes it sound a little more uneven and sharp in certain parts of the treble and therefore when I review the quintet, when I rave about the quintet, which I have before, it is strictly with the dark tips on because that tames the treble, evens out the frequency response a little bit and just it sounds beautiful after that. But one thing about the tips that it comes with is that it's made of a very soft silicone and if you try and shove it into your ear properly to get that good seal, the silicone tips tend to fold in on itself and you'll tend to lose base characteristics. And the best way to get the seal I have covered in my quintet review, you should go check that out. But meanwhile, if you get the fit right, the base is actually quite good. It's not overemphasized, the sub base isn't always there and it does not bleed into the mids causing everything to be warm and muddy. It's really, really good. More importantly, that point of bass impact, the mid bass impact, it's really tight in this. And I would say while the The Audio Hype 2 somehow sounds a little more voluminous, it's not necessarily better resolving in the bass. Both are somewhat equivalent and the only difference is that this is a little more laid back in the sub bass and therefore it doesn't interfere with the overall sound. And perhaps much more importantly, mid bass impact is tighter, it's punchier. This is bigger sounding. That's the best way I can put this. But the comparison gets even more meaningful in the mids and the highs because the quintet comes across as generally more resolving in the mids and the highs and that is in my opinion discounting the fact that it's a little bit hotter in the treble just naturally. It's just tuned that way. It's still just better for detail and more importantly all the little micro details are better separated on the Kiwi Ears Quintet than it is with the Hype. Now what I found is the Quintet to my ears just sounds a bit cleaner overall and the effect it has at least to my ears subjectively is that sound stage seems a little bit wider. Instrument separation, vocal separation, just separation in general between different sounds seems better and cleaner on the Quintet and that gives me the impression of even more resolution. And the fact that it's $80 cheaper, despite the caveats it has with the tips, does not bode very well for the The Audio Hype 2. Okay, I realize that everything I have said in this video makes it sound like one is clearly good and the other is clearly bad. That is not the case. Everything I've talked about, there are small differences. They're not huge differences. And in some cases, the quintet's not that good either. Like from the timbre point of view, the quintet sounds a little bit off. There's something a little bit off about it. Whereas the The Audio Hype 2 sounds more natural from balanced armatures. So my way have come a long way. And also the Hype 2 seems just a little more evenly tuned in the upper mids and highs. Again, small differences, but that's the whole point. The Quintet, a third cheaper, small differences from the Hype. You see what I'm saying? Also, if you take them out and about, this is the Quintet's box and this is the The Audio's case. <laughs> this is the one I'd want to carry in my pockets. I think it's a great IEM, it really is, but when you say it's $300, I'm naturally going to compare it with things and the moment I compared it with what I thought was really good value around the $200, $250 price point, it didn't quite hold up, but if you want more bass and sub bass, yeah, the The Audio does deliver. Not necessarily better quality and resolution, but just more. Would you spend the $80 extra though? That's what I want to know. And would you hit that subscribe button? That's I definitely want to know that. I'll see you in the next one if you do, and if you don't, hopefully i see you in the next one anyway. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.